Hey, and we're coming to you live again for Prevail's Compliance Corner. I'm Orly. And this is my colleague, Noelle. Hello. Say, you, you have such nice manners, Noelle. Say, <laughs> this is live, everyone. I'm very Southern. I have to. <laughs> I'm Southern, too, but I'm just not as nice as you are. <laughs> That's fair. All right. So in today's uh, Prevail Compliance Corner, we are talking about everyone's favorite to topic, system security plans. Woo! Yes. Exciting stuff. It is everyone's favorite topic. Everybody loves it. Yes, but but they are also a real pain in the butt. And so we're going to talk today about ways to make your system security plan a little bit more manageable to understand it a bit better and what you need to do to get started. And so on that note, let's get started with the first question of today's show. What is a system security plan? What's a system security plan, Noel? Such a good question. Or really, you should answer this. You could no, do this. You, you, you go. <laughs> Age before beauty. <laughs> a system security plan is really, think of it as the place where all of your procedures, all of your documentation, everything that you do day to day to take care of IT and security, it's all in one place. So if somebody picked it up and wanted to know how you deal with incident response or how you deal with passwords or how you deal with new users, it would all be in that document. So you you security folks over there, you guys talk about procedures and policies a lot. And you know, for us people on the other side of the fence, those words get meshed up a lot. What are the differences between procedures and policies? It's a really good question. And it is, it's very confusing. And it's something that I certainly struggled with for a long time too. So it's not just, it's not just the regular folk, it's us as well. So traditionally a policy is sort of, this is what you will do. You know, if I say a policy as an example would be, you will have a complex password, period. Okay, that's the policy. That is what you will do. The procedure on the other hand is how you're going to do that. The procedure would say, well, it's got to be, this many special characters, this many numbers, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, all the stuff we're all used to seeing a million times. And this is how it's going to be implemented. I'm going to make sure that every machine has this because of X, Y, and Z controls. Right. It's the how. So the procedure is the how. The policy is the you will. You will. You better, mister. You better do this. Yeah. I mean you. <laughs> I'll do this. All right. So the, 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 that's it. So the next question. Okay. So we talked about uh, what an SSP is, a system mm -hmm. security plan. What are the challenges there? Why is it such a challenge for so many people? You know, I think a big part of it is it's kind of like herding cats. Um, yeah. And you got a ton of different ideas and a ton of different thoughts and a ton of different procedures. So many, I think the average company probably has a multitude of people who are doing the same thing every single day and just don't think about it. Right. They don't write it down. They're just doing it over and over again. Well, what if that person gets hit by the lottery bus? You know, and like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> well, people always say get hit by a bus or win the lottery, and I like just kind of crossing them over. It's like, okay. what if? Because yeah, that was like a, a well, mess of words I don't think about too much. Exactly. So if somebody decides they're going to leave the company for whatever reason, what do you do with all that information that's in their head? It shouldn't ever be that way. It should be in that document, in the right. system security plan, so that the next person can pick it up and know exactly what they need to do to make sure that those policies, those you wills, will be executed correctly. So let's give a small example, right? The one that's a kind of simple one to address is what happens uh, to manage and make sure that CUI doesn't get up on a public-facing website. So you might have uh, a policy that says no CUI will be on the public facing website uh, but the procedure is underneath that yes and what it, and the procedure has to be correctly done you have to decide who are the pocs who are going to have access to put poc uh-oh another right. another acronym <laughs> point of contact okay who, there will you go. Be the, who will be the resource that you have internally who's going to be allowed or resources who will be allowed to post on the public facing website how do you decide that those are the right people? Do they have background checks or investigations right. in some way? Do they have a certain educational requirement or a certain, you know, vocational background? It doesn't matter what it is. You wouldn't want me posting on your public facing website. Well, you would probably be just fine. But uh, but a lot of people don't understand the severity of if that kind of sensitive information gets gets leaked out, if it's spilled. Spillage. Spillage. Also, another thing to think about, too, another procedure that goes along with this is does everybody in your organization get CUI training? Do they know what it even is? 
this is the kind of stuff that, like I said, when it's hurting cats, it gets bigger the more you look at it. You can look at one control, don't post CUI on a public facing site. And there could be 10 different procedures or integrated different controls into that one control right there. And right. that's what makes it such a big challenge. Right. And so what is the remediation if anything goes wrong? Right. And right. So it's not just like, don't post stuff up uh, that CUI on the website. It's here's who can post. Here's what you do if something goes wrong. And that's an easy one, right? Yeah. You that's and I have talked about really more easy. complex ones. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the straightforward ones, honestly. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. I'm scared already. <laughs> <laughs> Most people are understandably. Next question. How can defense contractors get started with creating a system security plan? You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. There are some, some organizations are more IT focused and they have somebody who's like, Hey, I can handle this all by myself. I don't need any help from anybody. That is awesome. Most like people, a lawyer who tries <laughs> to be their own lawyer. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't suggest doing that. That is not my suggest that suggestion. I should be my own lawyer. That's good. Cause I was never, I don't suggest one. that. I, I believe the, the old adage is the man who represents himself has a fool for a client. Mm. Kind of the same idea here. I don't suggest that. If you do happen to have somebody who is really an amazing cybersecurity professional who has done this before and, and wants to do it again, great. The odds of that are relatively slim with more, most average organizations. So right. for the regular organization, you're going to want some assistance. There's a lot of different templates that are out there that are free. Um, I know that we're probably going to- Linking to them in the show notes. Linking to them in the show notes. Right. Also see those below. But also uh, we at Prevail have a SSP package and a template and policy documentation as well, which especially for Prevail customers gets you kind of a lot farther along since we already right. put doc like in the document template itself, we put verbiage talking about each control specifically to Prevail. So it just right. makes it a little bit easier. So it depends on where someone's going. But that's Absolutely. a good lead in to our next question. How can Prevail help contractors create a system security plan? Look at that. Um, yeah. So again, we like I just said, we do have those templates available. There's a lot of different documents that we actually right. have available. Policy documentation, SSPs, also a POEM template as well, just to sort of piggyback on that as well. But again, it's really up to, like you said, it's up to the individual organization, right. what they need, what their level of investment is going to be. It's a lot of work. It really can be. Once you get it going, it can be really relatively easy, but it's getting everything together and really understanding what is going to check the box for those auditors. That's the tough part. Right. And so I think the takeaway there is that people should do what works for them, right? If they have great in-house talent or they have an MSP who already has a template, great, go ahead and use that. Yep. We're just saying that if you need, if you don't have those um, resources at your, at your beck and call, give us a call Absolutely. and, or they should contact you, Noel, right? For a, yes. All right. Yes. Contact, contact Noel for a 15 minute free compliance consult. Being on, it's there. Yep. And, and the can, show notes. yeah, there is a link. In the, there is actually a link in the show notes. We, we went to the George Washington School of Cherry Tree Pruning and you cannot <laughs> tell a lie. Schedule 15 minutes with Noel. Link in the show notes. And we hope we've answered all your questions about system security plans. Tune in next time for another episode of Prevail's Compliance Corner. This is fun. Yeah.